I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my video on domain and range of rational functions. As requested by many subscribers, I will discuss at length how to find domain and range of rational functions in this particular video. So the main question to address is how to find domain and range of rational functions. Let's begin by saying what are rational functions. So let's begin to understand rational functions first. When I say rational function, I mean something like in function notation, which has a polynomial, let's say p of x in the numerator and another polynomial q of x in the denominator. So that becomes a rational function. And since you cannot divide by 0, q of x is not equal to 0. So that's the basic. Now, as soon as I say that something is not equal to 0, it means we have restrictions. Now, these restrictions will lead to what? These restrictions will actually be restrictions on domain. So that means restriction on domain. Domain means x will not be equal to some values, right? Now if x is not equal to some values, then the y value will also be restricted. So that will also lead to restrictions on range. So that is why we see that rational functions could have, could have restrictions on both domain and range. So the idea here is to understand how to figure out the domain and range of rational functions. So let's begin with a very simple function. We'll take up uh, reciprocal function. Now, in this case, numerator p of x could be considered a constant, could be considered as 1 also, right? 1 is also a polynomial. Now, if that is the case, the parent function could be written as, let me write down, f of x as 1 over x. Now that is kind of simplest reciprocal function. Now here, x is not equal to zero. That means domain is restricted. So we say domain is x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to zero. Now if you sketch this particular function, what do you get? So I'm making a small sketch just to illustrate what we're trying to say here. So it look kind of like this. All right. As you can see from the graph, range is also restricted. As far as the range is concerned, the y values could have all possible values except 0. Now, these rational functions and this one 1 over x gives you a few important concepts. We see that as x approaches positive or negative infinity like these ends y approaches 0. Right? So it is never there it is approaching. Now this by definition is called horizontal asymptote. Now you also observe that when x approaches 0, now if you approach 0 from the left side, let me write down minus here, y approaches negative infinity. And when x approaches 0 from the right side, y approaches positive infinity. Now that condition, that when x is approaching a valid value, in that case, y is approaching 
some value which is not real, infinity. We call this as a vertical asymptote. We'll actually learn about more types of asymptotes. Specifically, we'll also look into other restrictions which will be, let me list them here, uh, holes and oblique asymptote. I should not write that to be a restriction, but let me write that here. We'll ex understand this later in this video itself. Anyway. So what I was saying here is that a reciprocal function could have horizontal and vertical asymptote. Now, in simple examples, uh, which we are taking here, these asymptotes are never crossed. The horizontal asymptote could be crossed, but not the vertical asymptote. So what you see here is that a rational function could have restriction on both domain and range. And as you see, 1 over x, which is a simple reciprocal function, is restricted that it cannot have x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 values. Perfect. Now, let us take more examples to understand rational function in details. Right. So, I'll take more examples now. So, let's move on to the next page. Now what we observed is that when f of x is equal to 1 over x, we have some restrictions, right? Now we could transform the function, right? So let's transform f of x. So what we will do here is let's say we kind of modify it. We say let it be kind of like this. So now we are talking about a function which has been transformed. So, so what you observe here is that horizontally translated one unit right and second one is vertically translated Two units. So in this case, the graph will be kind of like this. Horizontally translated one unit right, that means the asymptote will now be kind of here, vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote will be kind of like this. Do you see that? And the graph could be now sketched as this. So if I put x as 0, I get plus 1. So, right. so that is going to be my graph, where this line is y equals to 2, and this asymptote is x equals to plus 1. Now in this particular case, you can say that the domain now is x belongs to real numbers, where x is not equal to 1, and the range is y belongs to real numbers where y is not equal to 2. So you can see that from this translations or transformations we can actually find domain range for such functions. Right? Now you should remember that we may not have both restrictions. Let me take another example. Let's call this as example 2. Let me call this as this example 1. Okay, in that case, uh, let me define a function, let's say g of x, as equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, in this case, x squared plus 1 is never 0. In fact, x squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1, right? And if you graph this particular function, what do you observe? 
you see that the graph of this function is kind of like this. We will learn sketching techniques also but at present you can use your graphing calculator to graph and then understand the concept. So what you see here is that domain is not restricted, right? So domain is x belongs to real numbers. However, the range is restricted. So y value has to be greater than 0, but it is less than or equal to 1. So you could have rational functions where range is not restricted. You see that, correct? This is one of those examples. Uh, let me give you one more example where we will see that range is not restricted but domain is restricted. Okay, so let me call that as example 3. Uh, let it be, let's say, f of x equals 2. If I have higher degree of numerator, okay, and let me say the denominator is, uh, let's write this as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. Now, in this particular example, we know that x plus 1 times x minus 1, it should not be equal to 0, right? So that means x plus 1 should not be equal to 0 and x minus 1 should not be equal to 0 or x is not equal to minus 1 and x is not equal to plus 1. So that means, as far as the domain is concerned, we have a restriction that x could belong to real numbers, but x is not equal to plus minus 1. Now, how about range? So for that, let's look into the graph of the function. Okay, so let me sketch a graph here. Again, as I am requesting you, we we'll learn the techniques, but what we learned here that x cannot be plus and minus 1, that makes the denominator 0 and that leads to vertical asymptotes. Now, if you sketch the graph, what you get here is uh, that a function will be kind of like this. Now, since the degree of numerator is one higher, in this case, we'll actually have uh, oblique asymptote. So if you could divide, for example, you can find the equation of oblique asymptote also. So uh, we'll take a few videos on how to find oblique asymptote. But in this particular case, it is going to be y equals to x as oblique asymptote. To give you a clue, what you could do here is that you could just divide the numerator, which is x cubed, by denominator, which is x squared minus 1. I could write this as x squared plus 0x minus 1. These are the placeholders. We could write 0x squared plus 0x uh, plus 0. So when you divide, you could divide it x times, you get x cubed plus 0x squared minus x. And when you take away, you get x here as the remainder, right? And x as the quotient. So y equals to x becomes the oblique asymptote. So that gives to oblique asymptote. Right? Now, this value of x is the remainder. So the function is approaching oblique asymptote, however, it is not quite there. When x approaches infinity, positive, in that case, our function f of x is kind of greater than, by this amount, than, uh, than x, y equals to x, right? But when x approaches negative infinity, then f of x is kind of less than y equals to x, right? So, so the graph will be kind of like this. Okay. I'll provide you with the link where we'll discuss how to sketch these graphs. But clearly, it does indicate that y values could be anything, right? So, 
range could be anything there are no restrictions on this functions range you get an idea so what we have learned is that for rational functions we could have restrictions on domain we could have restrictions on range we could have restrictions on both of them right uh, let me take a few more examples to uh, illustrate possibilities. So let's say we have a function f of x equals to x plus 1 over, let's say, uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. In this particular function, we know that x cannot be equal to plus minus 1 since that makes the denominator 0, right? Since we know that x plus 1 times x minus 1 should not be equal to 0, right? That gives you this restriction. Now, I could simplify this. Cancelling the common factors. And once I do that, I get 1 over x minus 1. But the restriction remains that x cannot be equal to plus minus 1. Right? Now, this results into a whole at x equals to minus 1. So if I write f equals to minus 1 in this case, I mean, it cannot be, but it gives me a value of uh, minus half. So if you sketch this function, what you really get is one vertical asymptote at x equals to 1. But at x equals to minus 1, we have a hole at minus 1 minus half. You get an idea, right? Let me sketch it for you. If I write x equals to 0, I get minus 1. So, so there is a value here. And then minus half. So, so we have a hole somewhere here. Right? So the graph is kind of like this. So that is going to be the graph of our function f of x. Now in this function, you can now write domain and range clearly. Domain is x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to plus minus 1. And the range is y belongs to real numbers where y is not equal to 0 it is approaching and it is also not equal to minus half do you see that so so if there is a hole as it is in this particular example at in this case it is at minus 1 minus half in that case we could have restriction in range as shown here it doesn't make sense to you right so, so likewise, we could have rational functions with different kinds of restrictions. So restrictions because of uh, vertical asymptotes or because of holes. And since we have restriction on domain, sometimes there could be restrictions on range also, right? So these are some examples to, to understand. I would like you to take... Uh, few questions which could be you could write domain and range for a function something like this let's say we have x plus 1 times x minus 2 over x now for your practice you could take the example as f of x equals to x plus 1 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 1 i would like you to write its domain and range right I'll also provide you with a link on multiple choice questions based on domain and range of rational functions. Once you understand all these concepts, try to answer those multiple choice questions on domain and range. I hope that will give you a good practice. Feel free to write comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. And thanks again for taking keen interest in my videos and making suggestions. Thank you and all the best.